Hey guys, I'm going to talk about my bike setup for the Grand Gravel 500 that I just did in Texas. The bike is a 2017 Salsa Fargo. I have it set up with boost spacing in the rear. They make the alternator plates so it's compatible with a few other things. The front spacing on the uh, fork is 100 instead of the 110. I believe they have 110 now, but this is a little bit older model. So still touring bike, still frame, and carbon fiber fork. I have it set up with the cow chipper handlebars, which have less flare on them going out than the wood chippers. And that allows me to get a flat surface up here. I had a really hard time moving these brake levers back enough to get a flat surface, which is really annoying after you've been in the hoods for a while. Uh, I have aluminum T1 profile design arrow bars. Uh, I have an aluminum Niner 100 millimeter stem on there. A couple bottle cages, those are all Lazine power bottle cages, which I think, in my opinion, are the best cages you can buy for the money. They're about $9. Um, you can actually flex these in or out to hold a few different size water bottles. I used some fenders knowing that it could possibly be, be muddy down there. So the front one is uh, Mucky Nuts and doesn't really do a good job of keeping mud off your down tube but what it does do is keeps a lot of mud off of your front pack and out of your face. So if you're going at a high speed, you're not getting rain or mud in your eyes. And on the rear, I had this SKS X-Blade, which I think is one of their newer models, uh, flexible at the end there. And same thing, like you're still gonna get mud on your seat stays and this uh, down tube, but it keeps it off your back, so it keeps you nice and dry. What I really liked about the boost spacing and the new frame size is that this is compatible for three inch tires. So these are 2.2 inch tires. And with that larger capacity and that extra clearance there between the tire and the frame, I didn't have any issues with having to keep mud out of my drivetrain. I really just had to keep it oiled. Um, and I used Demontech, it worked pretty good. About once every 125 miles I had to oil it. So I think I oiled it four times. And then, you know, this chain's actually getting replaced because I just stretched it past the 0.75 wear limit. And that was after 2,300 miles of riding. So the this is just a little handlebar extender right here. You can buy these off of Amazon for uh, 10 or 10 to 15 bucks, depending on which one you want. That has actually lasted me over 10,000 miles. It's pretty awesome, cheap piece of equipment. This is a Synwave Cycles beacon. I love this light. I've had it on a few races now, over 7,500 miles, zero issues. This front pack is made by Revlet. This is called their Egress Pocket. This is a completely waterproof pack. And then in addition to that, I had the Oveja Negra uh, XL top tube pack, bag. I usually keep all my electronics in there and my wallet. And this is a Salsa branded frame bag, which they're pretty good. Unfortunately, they are made in China, but it's hard to beat um, a custom made frame pack for 130 bucks. Uh, it has a larger capacity versus the one I had for my old Salsa Fargo. It has about an extra liter. So I actually carried three liters of water the whole race and I carried one up here one up here and then one actually in the frame pack right back here, just those Zephyl bottles. I didn't want to carry one down here just because I knew it was probably going to get muddy and I probably wouldn't need four liters of water. Um, so yeah, these bags work good. I would recommend using some zipper lube because these smaller zippers tend to get a little tight. So lube those up once every couple weeks. Um, I just installed this Cane Creek Thud Buster, so it was kind of nice to get out and use that. I really like it. It definitely dampens those um, those bumps. This saddle is a specialized Power Arc Expert or S-Works, so it has the carbon fiber rails. This is a 143 wide, 
and I use their 143 Phenom and what I found on this is my thighs are rubbing and it's just really not that comfortable after one or 200 miles. So I'll be getting rid of that saddle, unfortunately, and trying something new. For the cranks, I have um, XT Shimano 785 cranks, old school. Uh, those are just ones that I know work well and I was able to get a good deal on them on eBay. The front chain ring was a 34 tooth by Wolf Tooth Components and that's just one of their alloys that has about 2300 miles on it, zero issues. I ran an 1142 Sunrace cassette out back. Obviously I'm just getting ready to clean this bike. Uh, I had to drive back from Texas and there's actually some snow in Illinois so there's some salt that I need to get out of here. Just a 1x10 drivetrain. I haven't made it to 11 speed yet. And my, I, I do bar end shifters. These are micro shift. So this is their 10 speed. I really love these. Uh, I actually happened to sprain my wrist during the race. And I'm still able to just kind of bump this up or bump it down. Even with a sprained wrist, I was able to change gears pretty effectively. I ended up going with uh, Continental Race Kings. These are the 2.2s. These are pretty magnificent tires. I started out with a pressure of 28 in the PSI in the rear, and then I ran 25 in the front. I had a, I had just mounted these, so they weren't quite ready. As you can see, this one's gone a little, lost a little air. So I pumped this up about halfway through the race, but I think by the end of the race, I was probably running 23 or 24 PSI. So great cushioning and dampening properties. Um, during the race, during the gravel sections. I ran an Onyx rear hub, which is um, new to me. And holy crap, I think those are that might be one of the best additions. They have zero engagement, so it's instant power. They're silent, which is amazing. You don't have to listen to that free hub clicking all the time. For my rear light, uh, Cat Eye Omni. These are amazing lights. They're only $14, I've ridden with them through thunderstorms in the winter. If you put a pair of lithium ion batteries in there, they will actually last 100 hours like they state. And I ran this the entire race, which was good because we never saw the sunshine. So I was definitely more visible out there. And that, I mean, I was on the bike for about 48 hours and this still has plenty of battery life left. So I wasn't worried about it having to shut off at all. Uh, BB7 mechanical brakes, those are what I know. I know I can fix them on the road. I know that the brake pads last 6,000 miles, so never had any issues with those. If you're looking at this little mounting system here, this is a King Cage water bottle mount. They make those out of Durango, Colorado. They're a little expensive for what they are, but they are completely stable, and it's a good way to add a water bottle somewhere. Also, on the top cap here, you can see this little mount system that's also made by King Cage. That's something I picked up from uh, another biker, Lael setup. I know she's run those before in the past. Uh, one of my favorite safety features is my Zephyl rear light. I actually got run off the road in the Sam Houston National Forest by a diesel truck that was towing a wide, wide load and apparently he didn't want to slow down for the oncoming traffic to pass me safely. So um, that you know, potentially saved uh, uh, an accident that would have sent me to the hospital, if not worse. Uh, these SRAM S6000 or S5000 brake levers, I've had these for over 15,000 miles. They're pretty rock solid. So that's about it for the bike setup. The front hub is a shutter precision through axle. So that powers everything in tandem with my light. I also carried a shutter precision, or no, I'm sorry, an anchor 10,000 watt milliamp battery. So I'm able to keep full power to my light even when I'm going slow or walking through mud puddles. And when I loaded this up with all of my food, all of my warm clothes and extra clothes in here and three liters of water, it weighed 44 pounds, so I was definitely running on the heavy side out there, but um, it's a comfortable rig, and that's what I'll use for the ATR. So real quick, um, done with the bike, but I'm just going to talk about my gear real quick that I brought down there in case anyone's interested. Uh, these are specialized XC Expert mountain bike shoes. They have, 
You can see how muddy it was down there at the race. These have close to 17,000 miles on them. They're fantastic. You can buy replaceable sole inserts for them, and they make different levels of padding, one, two, or three. So I'm about a two on their padding level. So when those wear out, you can get new ones for pretty cheap. My helmet is a Euro uh, Synth Mips. And that's just one I use for the Trans Am. So I just decided to take it down there because it's a little lighter than my cheap mountain bike helmet. Uh, base layers. I always wear these. Uh, this is a Capoline from Patagonia. This is their lightweight base layer. Uh, weighs next to nothing. They breathe well. And in the summer I even wear the long sleeves. So it keeps me protected from the sun. They're easy to wash. They have the polygene odor control. So they don't get as stinky as as most synthetic fabrics do and they kind of retain their heat when they're wet and then for my thicker layer this is called the thermal weight by patagonia so those are my two top layers in addition to my raincoat and my core and my legs stayed warm the whole time during the race i had issues uh with my feet and my hands being cold but uh, i didn't have any extra layers for those really so i couldn't do anything I wore these uh, Castelli sun blockers, so they're not thermal. They're just a really thin layer. They're called sun blockers, but it keeps the wind off of your knees, so it keeps your knees somewhat warm. These are LG Neo Power bike shorts, and I wore them for the Trans Am, so you can see they're they're pretty faded. Um, they did start to rip a little bit on the bottoms here. And I wrote LG, and they sent me a brand new pair. So thank you, LG, Louis Garneau. Uh, for the top, I had a buff. I always carry a buff, especially for when I need to sleep during the daytime, which happens quite frequently. I can put that over my eyes. This is a Patagonia thermal weight, same as that orange one. That's just a skull cap. For my socks, I wore Midway Icebreaker Merino wool socks. Those are great. Um, unfortunately, my feet were wet, so if I hadn't worn Merino, I probably might have had to drop out of the race, but these kept me comfortable enough, I guess you would say, that I was able to keep going. These are uh, specialized XC light gloves. They're really lightweight, full finger gloves. My hands were freezing, as that's not a fault of the gloves. It was just wet and cold. I should have brought some wool gloves or some mittens or just something to block the rain the, um, for my rain gear these are both outdoor research and this is actually their helium line so that's their pretty pretty light packable definitely bike packer friendly line of stuff it breathes fairly well it's lightweight um, and it's going to protect you from the rain pretty well they do have their limits like all rain gear so yeah that's about it I uh, hope you enjoyed the race, and if you have any questions about the gear setup or anything, just let me know, and we will get back to you. All right, have a good day. Peace.